guys, Aaron from Royal Blue here. I decided that today we're going to go ahead and do the preview image. Um, I just have been wanting to do this one and I feel like getting it off my chest. So I'm going to do the preview for the fleece pack since my dragon pack is not finished. I just thought we'd do the fleece. So the first thing you want to do is open your file and make sure that everything is how it's supposed to be, you know, typos, just proofread a little bit. And then we're going to go File, Export as PDF. Now one thing you always want to do if you're giving away something with clip art, or even if you're selling with clip art, is you need to put security on it. So you're going to put security, set passwords, and you're going to set the permission password. Set it as something that you're going to remember, otherwise you could run in trouble like down the line. So, printing, yes, we want them to allow, allow them to print, so high resolution is fine. Changes, I do not permitted. Content, enable copy of content, no. Enable text access for accessibility tools, no. So this way they can't copy anything, they can't make any changes, they just can print, and they don't need a password for that. So then we're gonna export it, and I'll export it there. And sometimes it takes a minute to export. You can see the little bar at the bottom. And there we go. So now we have our PDF file. What we're going to do is now, now is switch over to GIMP. We are going to open a new file, new, and I usually make mine 500 by 400. That's just a width and height that I found that I'm comfortable with. There's nothing else for it. It fits nicely on um, Facebook. It fits nicely on Pinterest. Although on Pinterest, you might want a taller one because that seems to catch more attention. But just, you know, play around with the size. That's up to you. So we've got our 500 by 400. Now we are going to go to File, Open as Layers, and we're going to find our, here we go, find our PDF and open it. Here we go. And it's going to give us this option to open it. Now first, this can take you to get later, you want to change the width and the height because that's going to come out way too big. I do about 150 in the height, in sorry, the width, and that usually works out for me. Now, if I have a lot of pages that are turned on their side like this, like a lot of pages, the majority, then I'll make um, height like 150 instead because you're going to want to turn them. So, and now you just want to select a variety of your pages. So, I'm going to do this one, and if you hold down control, you can hold multiple ones. I'm going to do one of the pre writing, definitely the puzzle that's colorful the matching, the what's different, maybe some shapes. I want about 12 of these. What do I got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I'm not going to have enough, 10, 11, I'll do another one of these, 12. And then you're going to hit import. And it's all going to show up right in your little five, 500 by 400 file. So first, this one we got to turn it. So this is the uh, rotate tool right here. And all you got to do is click on it and up pops this. I know I want it to be 90 degrees. If you want to just turn it yourself, you can do that. But if you know exactly what you want, you might as well just type it in. And then we're going to get the move tool and move it into place. And I usually just do them in order. If you really want to, you can, you know, put them exactly the right place or, or whatever, but I have never had a problem just putting them in order. Did that not work? Rotate. 90 degrees. Why is it not rotating? There we go. Move. Now, sometimes when you get these that are supposed to be on their side, take up the whole row. I'm only going to need 11. And then 
like it, don't lock it this way. And you kind of just want to overlap them to get as much out of it as possible. Plus, the more you overlap, the busier it looks. One trick about GIMP is you have to select move the active layer, otherwise it's going to move whatever layer it thinks you want, and it's often wrong. Here's my puzzle. The next ones, they're just under there, but they'll still come if you click on it. Okay, so we have our files all spread out. The next thing I like to do is to just rotate them a little bit so they look a little bit messy. So all that takes is the rotate tool, and I go to about 7 and negative 7. I don't make it exact. Sometimes it goes as much as 10. It kind of depends on how I'm feeling. So now they're all turned. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a shadow. So it makes it look a little bit 3D and it just looks better. So just click on the first, um, the first layer, go to filters, light some shadow, drop shadow. I'm just going to show up down here. Now, I would put mine about 50 and you want to unclick allow resizing. What happens if it's too close to the edge, it'll resize your image to uh, account for the shadow, which if you already know what image size you want, you don't want it to be resized. So, And then you just have to go through and do each individual level. Now the nice thing is when this shows up again, it keeps your resizing unchecked and it keeps it at 50, so you don't have to click that every time. Our last one. So now they all have a nice drop shadow. It looks like a little 3D, like they're laying on top of each other. I like it. So the next thing I want to do is put a border all around it. Now I like to get a color that's complementary fleece, black and white. I'm just going to do black. So you want to put a new layer up here and then and make sure it's at the top, otherwise, other things will be on top of it. Then you want to do um, Control A to select all. You can't do control A for whatever reason, just go up to select all. And then we're going and make sure that the color you have right here is the color you want this to be. So I want mine to be black, so it's black, but if you wanted red, you gotta go up and switch it to red. So we've got black. We're gonna go to edit, stroke selection. Now, Jim does stroking a little odd to me, in my opinion. The line width isn't consistent with like Photoshop. So I usually go all the way up to about 20, 25. I'm going to go with a conservative 23. And then just stroke, and it puts a nice line all around your selection. One trick I like to use, and I think I'll do it with white on this one, we're going to make another layer underneath the black line. Just a blank layer. So it's Control A again. And this time we're going to do it in white. We're just going to have a nice little white border around it. So for it to show up underneath, it needs to be at least the same length. So we did 23, so I'm going to do 28. And you've got a nice little white border around it. You can make that fun in all kinds of ways with different colors. The last thing we need to do is add some text. So you're going to go to your text over here and click. And I usually just title it Police Pack or something descriptive. Now my text is white, so it's not showing up. So we are going to select all and make it black. Because to change the text color, you got to go down here. And the hard part, I'm going to enlarge it a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. The hard part is finding a, a uh, font that you like. So let's see if we can find anything we like. I don't know if there's anything that's just special on here. This is my husband's computer. I type polite instead of police. That's just silly. Moon Boran. Let's fix this. I was typing it crazy. 
I don't know what I want for the fleece. I guess I want something kind of official looking, nothing too serious. So this is not fleece. Maybe Moon Brand will do it. Okay, fleece hat. I want it bigger. I also want to move it. How do I move it? I have to get the move tool. Fleece hat. So now I'm going to put it up a little bit because right under here, I'm going to put my website. That way everybody knows where this came from. Now if you notice, it's kind of hard to read. And I don't like that. So I'm going to make a layer underneath it. I'm going to get out the paintbrush. Paintbrush. And boy, this is complicated. I'm going to make it white. And I want the size to be rather large. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to increase the size. Oop, too big. Maybe Hankook would do. Okay, that's better. All right, and then I am just going to color it white underneath it. Completely, totally white. Now, obviously, I don't want it to stay white. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to filters, blur, and use the Gaussian blur. And I'm going to make it about 10. So that helps a little to get the side softer. And then we're just going to turn the opacity down. That's up here. So you can hardly notice the white back there. It's a lot easier to read police hat. Now we're going to add in, oops, that won't work, royalblue.com. Now at this moment, it's huge and white. Neither of which do we want. So we're going to go back here, make it black, and decrease. Now I would normally put this in a specific font, but I don't have it on this computer, so we're just going to settle for this right now. And I like to make it rather small, so it's there, but not obtrusive. And there's that. Now the last thing I might do is add a little police officer in there. You can just go back up to file, open those layers, find your police officer, stick them in there. Um, I don't think I have the actual police officer on my, my disc, so I can't do that. I could add in a dragon, but not a police officer. So that is how you put together a preview pack and add images and add text and everything. Next week, you're going to start with prefix stuff. I